Um, with respect to Baltimore, uh, let me make a couple of points. First, uh, obviously our thoughts can be with the family of uh, Freddie Gray. Uh, understandably, they want answers. And uh, the DOJ has uh, opened an investigation. It is working with local law enforcement to find out exactly what happened, and I think there should be full transparency and accountability. Uh, second, uh, my thoughts are with the police officers who were injured. Uh, in last night's disturbances. Uh, it underscores that that's a tough job, uh, and we have to keep that in mind. Uh, and my hope is that, that they can uh, you know, heal and get back to work uh, as soon as possible. Point number three, there's no excuse for the kind of violence that we saw yesterday. Um, it is counterproductive. Uh, when individuals get bars and start prying open doors to loot, they're not protesting. They're not making a statement. They're stealing. When they burn down a building, they're committing arson. And they're destroying and undermining uh, businesses and opportunities in their own communities uh, that rob uh, jobs and opportunity from uh, people in that area. So uh, it is entirely appropriate that uh, the mayor of Baltimore, who I spoke to yesterday, and the governor, who I spoke to yesterday, uh, work to stop that kind of senseless uh, violence and destruction. That is not a protest. That is not a statement. It's people, a handful of people taking advantage of a situation for their own purposes and uh, they need to be treated as criminals. Point number four, the violence that happened yesterday distracted from the fact that you had seen multiple days of peaceful protests that were uh, focused on entirely legitimate concerns of these communities in Baltimore, led by clergy and community leaders, and they were constructive and they were thoughtful, and frankly didn't get that much attention. And one burning building uh, will be looped on television over and over and over again, and the thousands of demonstrators who did it the right way, uh, I think, have been lost uh, in the discussion. The overwhelming uh, majority of the community in Baltimore, uh, I think, have handled this appropriately, expressing real concern and outrage over the possibility that our laws were not applied evenly in the case of Mr. Gray, and that accountability needs to uh, exist. Um, and I think we have to give them credit. My understanding is, is you've got some of the same organizers now going back into these communities to try to clean up in the aftermath of a handful of protesters, uh, a handful of uh, criminals uh, and thugs who, uh, who tore up the place. What they were doing, what uh, those uh, community leaders uh, and clergy and others were doing, uh, that is a statement. Uh, that's the kind of organizing that needs to take place if we're going to tackle this problem. And they deserve credit for it and we should be lifting them up. Point number five, and I've got six. Uh, because this is important. Um, since Ferguson and the task force that we put together, uh, we have seen too many instances of what appears to be uh, police officers uh, interacting with uh, individuals, uh, primarily African American, often poor, uh, in ways that raise troubling questions. And it comes up, it seems like, once a week now, or once every couple of weeks. And so I think it's pretty understandable why the leaders of civil rights organizations, uh, but more importantly, moms and dads, across the country might start 
saying this is a, this is a crisis. What I'd say is, uh, this has been a slow rolling crisis. This has been going on for a long time. This is not new. And we shouldn't pretend that it's new. The good news is, is that perhaps there's some newfound awareness because of social media and video cameras and so forth that uh, there are, are problems and challenges when it comes to how policing and our laws are applied in certain communities and we have to pay attention to it and respond. Uh, what's also good news is the task force that was made up of law enforcement and community activists that we brought together here in the White House have come up with very constructive, concrete proposals that if adopted by local communities and by states and by counties, by law enforcement generally, would make a difference. Wouldn't solve every problem, but would make a concrete difference in rebuilding trust and uh, making sure that the overwhelming majority of uh, effective, honest, uh, and fair uh, law enforcement officers, uh, that they're able to do their job better because it will weed out or retrain or put a stop to those handful uh, who uh, may be uh, not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Now the challenge for us as the federal government is, is that we don't run these police forces. I can't federalize every police force in the country and force them to retrain, but what I can do is to start working with them collaboratively uh, so that they can uh, begin this process of change uh, themselves. And we, uh, coming out of the task force that we put together, we're now working with local communities. Uh, Department of Justice has just announced a grant program for those uh, jurisdictions that want to purchase body cameras. Uh, we are going to be issuing grants for those jurisdictions that are prepared to start trying to implement some of the new training and data collection and other things that can make a difference. Uh, and we're going to keep on working with those local jurisdictions uh, so that they can begin to make the changes uh, that are necessary. Um, I think it's going to be important for uh, organizations like the Fraternal Order Police and other police unions and organizations to acknowledge that this is not good for police. We have to own up to the fact that occasionally there are going to be problems here, just as there are in every other occupation. You know, there, there are some bad politicians. Uh, who are corrupt. There are uh, folks in the business community or on Wall Street who don't do the right thing. Well, there's some police who aren't doing the right thing. And rather than close ranks, you know, what we've seen is a, a number of thoughtful uh, police chiefs and commissioners and others recognize they got to get their arms around this thing and work together with the community to solve the problem. And we're committed to facilitating that process. So. Uh, the heads of uh, our COPS uh, agency uh, that helps with community policing, they're already out in Baltimore. Uh, our uh, head uh, assistant uh, attorney general for uh, the Civil Rights Division is already out in Baltimore. But we're going to be working systematically with every city and jurisdiction uh, around the country to try to uh, help them implement some solutions that we know work. And I'll make my final point. I'm sorry, Mr. Prime Minister, but this is a pretty important issue for us. Um, we can't just leave this to the police. I think there are police departments that have to do some soul searching. I think there's some communities that have to do some soul searching. Uh, but I think we as a country have to do some soul searching. This is not new. It's been going on for decades. And without making any excuses for criminal activities that take place in this community, what we also know is that if you have impoverished communities that have been stripped away of opportunity, where children are born uh, into abject poverty, they've got 
parents often because of substance abuse problems or incarceration or lack of education themselves can't uh, do right by their kids. If it's more likely that those kids end up in jail or dead than that they go to college. In communities where there are no fathers uh, who uh, can provide guidance to young men. Communities that where there's no investment and manufacturing has been stripped away and drugs have flooded the community and the drug industry ends up being the primary employer for a whole lot of folks. In those environments, if we think that we're just going to send uh, the police to do the dirty work of containing the problems that arise there without as a nation and as a society saying what can we do to change those communities, to help lift up those communities and, and give those kids opportunity, then we're not going to solve this problem and we'll go through the same cycles of periodic uh, conflicts between the police and uh, communities and the occasional uh, riots in the streets and everybody will uh, feign concern until it goes away and then we go about our business as usual. If we are serious about solving this problem, then we're going to not only have to help the police, we're going to have to think about what can we do, the rest of us, to make sure that we're providing early education to these kids, to make sure that we're reforming our criminal justice system so it's not just a pipeline from schools to prisons, so that we're not rendering uh, men in these communities uh, unemployable because of a felony record for a nonviolent drug offense. That we're making investments so that they can get the training they need to find jobs. That's hard. That requires more than just the occasional uh, news report or task force. And there's a bunch of my agenda that would make a difference right now in that. Now I'm under no illusion that out of this Congress we're going to get massive investments uh, in urban communities. Uh, and so we'll try to find areas where we can make a difference around school reform and around job training and around uh, some investments in, in infrastructure in these communities and uh, trying to attract new businesses in. Uh, but if we really want to solve the problem, if our society really wanted to solve the problem, uh, we could. It's just it would require everybody saying this is important, this is significant. And that we don't just pay attention to these communities when a CVS burns. And we don't just pay attention when uh, a young man gets shot or has his spine snapped. But we're paying attention all the time because we consider those kids our kids and we think they're important and they shouldn't be living in poverty and violence. Uh, that's how I feel. I think there are a lot of good-meaning people around the country that feel that way, but um, that kind of political mobilization uh, I think we haven't seen in quite some time. Uh, and what I've tried to do is to promote those ideas that would make a difference, but uh, I think we all understand that uh, the politics of that are tough because it's easy to ignore those problems or to treat them just as a law and order issue as opposed to a broader social issue. That was a really long answer, but I felt pretty strongly about it.